Hello and welcome to this coding lesson on transforming the extracted data. In our previous coding exercise, we learned how to extract data from a website using web scraping. In this lesson, we will learn how to transform the data to make it proper enough for loading it into the data warehouse, in our case, a database. We will be performing a hands-on transformation using the following Python libraries. We will be using regular expressions library for string matching and date time library for date manipulation. So let us go ahead and start by importing the libraries in Python by using the following import convention. So I'll go ahead and run these two lines of code to import regular expressions and date time library in Python. So in our last lesson, we left off at the point where we viewed the data from one of the tables we extracted from the parsed HTML. We used the following line of code to do so, and I'll run this code to see what our extracted data looked like. So as we can see, we have a string value with various characters and our textual data all in one place. So without cleaning the data, it would be really difficult to load it into the database. So let us transform the data and change it into a suitable format. So as we can see, the text contains a lot of new line strings denoted by slash n. So we'll be filtering them to get only the required data. We will first split the textual data into different lines by using the following lines of code. And as we can see, we get a list with several empty strings and our textual characters all in one place. So we will now go ahead and remove the empty strings by using the filter function. So I'll go ahead and run this line of code, which returns me a list of different values without the empty strings. So this value is the data for May 1. And since we want to extract the data for the entire month of May, let us do the same for every day of the month and save it as a nested list. The nested list contains data for each day of the month in this format, which is enclosed in an outer data list as shown here. So let us go ahead and define an empty data list for adding the nested data for each day of the month. We will then loop through each of the data in the table data for 31 days of the month and then filter the value that is the textual data as we illustrated earlier. We will finally append the value to the outer data list. So I'll go ahead and run these lines of code to get the data in the list. So let us go ahead and see what our values look like. So as we can see, we have the first element of the outer data list, which contains the different values of May 1. And similarly, we can see the value for May 2 in the first index of the list. So to get the numerical value of the data from the list of strings, we will have to perform string matching using regular expression. So as an example, let us see how we can match a string using regular expression by taking only a single string element from these lists of strings. So in this case, we are taking the element at index 10, which is uh, the maximum rain per minute. So let us see what the string looks like. So it contains a lot of different uh, textual characters. And what we want to do is we want to extract this value from the string. So since we are only concerned about the numerical data for the maximum rain per minute, let us select only the first five words. So we are essentially splitting this data and getting only the first five uh, values of the list. So as we can see, we get the values in the form of a list. So we will now use the find all function of the regular expression library to find the numerical values or digits in the string. So this line of code passes our list in the form of a string to the find all function of the regular expressions library to find only the strings that contain digits. So I'll go ahead and run this line of code. So as we can see, we get a list of strings of our previous list that contain numerical values. Now, if we notice, 
the original value that we wanted to extract was a decimal value that is 0, 0.00 but the operations that we performed has returned us the value split it as two strings in the list so we will now go ahead and join these two strings with a decimal by using the join function so i'll go ahead and run this line of code to join the uh, two strings into a single string Hence, we finally receive the required numerical value in its proper format. So what we just illustrated was for a single data in the data list. Now, we will get the numeric values for each day of the month of May and save them in the form of a nested list from May 1 to May 31 as shown here. So we are initializing the main list to save the nested list as day data list. We now have the outer data list that we previously created. So I'll go ahead and see what our outer data list looks like as a reminder what we created. So as we can see we have the nested data for each day of the month. So we will now loop through each of the nested inner data list of the outer data list. We want to get the numerical data from each of the values in the inner data list. So we will now initialize another empty list named as numeric values so as to append all the numeric values that we parse from the list. We will further loop through each of the weather information data in the inner data list that starts from the first index. Here, we are skipping the zeroth index of the list as it contains the heading of the table that we previously saw on the website. We will then go ahead and apply the same set of operations that we previously applied, which parses the numeric value from the list of strings. We then append each of these values into the numerical values list that we created. And after each iteration, the numeric values are appended to the main list, that is the D data list, in a nested format. So I'll go ahead and run these lines of code. And let's go ahead and see what we have in the first index of the list. So as we can see, we have a list of values, which values are the numerical values for me one. Now, we will be storing the data into a data frame for easy loading into a database. So we can do that by using the pandas library in Python. So let us install the pandas library for data manipulation. Pandas library is a fast, powerful, flexible, high-level data analysis and manipulation tool that is built on top of the Python programming language. Uh, you can learn more about it here. I've uh, attached a link here. So you can go ahead and run this line of code to install it. Uh, I'm skipping it as I've already installed it. Now, in general convention, we use the abbreviation PD to use the pandas library in Python. So I'll go ahead and run this line of code to import pandas in Python. Okay, so now, as we discussed earlier, we will be using the pandas data frame to store our data values in a proper format. A data frame is a two-dimensional labeled data structure in pandas which is similar to a table. It contains rows and columns of different types of data. So we will first get all the column names from the website and save it as a list named columns for our data frame. So as a reminder, our data looked like this. And uh, we are essentially taking all the values from this table and saving it as a list called columns. So I'll go ahead and run this line of code to initialize the value of columns. So now we are creating a pandas data frame with a day data list as the values and columns as the headings of the data values. So I'll go ahead and run this line of code to create a pandas data frame with our required data. Now 
we can see what our data looks like by using the head function of the pandas data frame. So as we can see, we have all our data values listed in the form of a table with all the columns as the headings. Next, we will create a new column called date with the ascending values from May 1st to May 31st by using the date range function of the pandas library. So I'll run this and we can view the data and we can find that we have a new column called date. Now, as we had manually matched strings and parsed the data, all of the data in these columns are string objects. We will now convert all of our data values into numeric so that we can apply numerical operations on them. So I'll go ahead and run this line of code to convert our data values into numerical values. Now, a general convention for naming columns for a pandas data frame is to avoid spaces and convert all the characters into lowercase. We will do so by using the rename function of the data frame. We are replacing the spaces by underscore and then converting the characters into lowercase. We can also see the value of the column names by using the dot keys function of the data frame. So I'll go ahead and run these two lines of code. And as we can see, the name of our columns have changed. Finally, the last transformation operation in this exercise is to fix the value of humidity in our data. As we had seen earlier, humidity is mentioned in percentage in the website. We will hence divide each data value by 100. So we are taking the columns having the humidity values and applying a function on each of the data of the column to divide it by 100. So I'll go ahead and run these two lines of code and check what our data looks like after the division. So as we can see, we now have our humidity data values in terms of decimals, and we finally have our data in our required format. We will now save this data as a CSV using the two CSV function of the pandas data frame. This line of code will save our data in the form of a comma separated value or CSV in the data directory of our working directory. This data can now be loaded and used easily for our data science process further. So I'll go ahead and run this line of code and hence we've successfully completed our transformation process. In our next lesson, we will learn how to save or load this data into a database. So I'll see you in the next lesson.